expedition, fashioned from the extreme, presents the most challenging forms of human exploration, specifically treks to the North and South Poles, ascent of the highest mountain peaks, descent to the depths of the ocean, and travel to outer space. The exhibition traces how the clothing and equipment made for survival in these environments found their way into high fashion. My name is Patricia Mears, Deputy Director of the Museum at FIT and Curator of Expedition Fashion from the Extreme. Please join me on this journey through the first large-scale exhibition to illustrate the impact of extreme exploration on fashion. Unlike earlier exploratory voyages, which were commercially or politically motivated, expeditions to reach the North and South Poles were greatly influenced by the rise of science in the 19th century. Charles Darwin's seminal publication on the origin of species, released in 1859, was one of the most influential books of its day, and it helped the desire to explore extreme environments. Expeditions became even more popular thanks to the French writer Jules Verne, who is credited as the father of science fiction. His books, From the Earth to the Moon, published in 1865, and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, published five years later, were diligently researched and remarkably prescient, as Verne anticipated space and deep sea travel decades before they became reality. Prior to the 1960s, however, fashionable images of the deep sea, or the Arctic, were relatively rare, and actual clothing inspired by these harsh and distant environments was even rarer. This began to change by the mid-20th century. During the 1960s, fashion design and fashion photography became wilder and more experimental. During the 1960s, venerated couturiers such as Madame Grey began to design après ski wear that resembled garments designed for Arctic explorers. The explorers ensembles, in turn, were invented and made by indigenous Arctic peoples such as the Inuit and the Eskimos. Leading fashion magazines Vogue and Harper's Bazaar also began to send models and photographers to the Arctic to capture otherworldly images set amongst the icebergs. By the late 20th century, indigenous Arctic garments increasingly inspired leading designers, such as Yoji Yamamoto, Karl Lagerfeld for Chanel, and Jean-Paul Gaultier. Perhaps the best-known Arctic-inspired designs were created by Isaac Mizrahi in 1994. The 1995 hit documentary film entitled Unzipped detailed the creation of Mizrahi's fall-winter 1994 collection. Partly inspired by the groundbreaking 1922 documentary Nanook of the North, unzipped highlight moments such as Mizrahi's love of fur pants. Unzipped also included dramatic scenes in which Mizrahi is demoralized to learn that Jean-Paul Gaultier also produced an Eskimo-inspired collection. But Mizrahi need not have worried as his ebullient, brightly colored, and cheerful take on Arctic chic in no way resembled Gautier's more literal designs. The parka, originally invented by the Arctic peoples, also became a wardrobe staple during the second half of the 20th century. Among the most popular parkas ever made were the M48 and M51. Designed with a long pointed back, it became known as the fishtail. Commissioned by the U.S. military during the Korean conflict, the fishtail was constructed to withstand the country's brutally cold winters. Soon after the conclusion of the conflict, the M48 and M51 became military surplus and were appropriated by counterculture groups such as the mods in the 1960s, the punks in the 1970s, and, in the 1990s, grunge. Contemporary designer Joseph Altazura refined the fishtail in 2011, and it became one of the most popular fashion hits that season.
The down-filled jacket is a garment worn by millions of people today. But outerwear made with goose and duck down feathers was revolutionary when the first commercial versions were created in the 1930s. Eddie Bauer began to design his down-filled jacket in 1935 and was awarded a patent in 1940. In 1937, the Anglo-American couturier, Charles James, designed the first high-fashion version made of eiderdown and white silk satin. The popularity of down-filled garments rose dramatically after 1953, the year mountaineers Edmund Hillary and Tenzang Norgay became the first humans on record to successfully reach the summit of Mount Everest. By the 1970s, New York-based designers began to create chic, quilted, and high-tech fiber-filled jackets that were featured in American fashion magazines. Soon after Charles James's 1937 evening jacket reappeared in popular publications like Esquire and the New York Times. By the late 1970s, Norma Kamali's sleeping bag coat made its debut. It was not only a fashion hit, it would presage other reinterpretations, such as Martin Margiela's 2002 duvet coat. The down-filled parka, later known as the puffer or puffa, would become a ubiquitous clothing item worn by millions, thanks in part to Tommy Hilfiger's 1990s creations that were popularized by leading hip-hop artists. Some hip-hop stars also wore inventive costumes that were flamboyant but also influential riffs on the puffer. Recently, leading avant-garde designers such as Junior Watanabe have been creating body obfuscating versions of the puffer, while Dimna Jvasalia reconfigured the puffer, paying homage to the great couturier Cristobal Balenciaga. It was also during the 1960s that fashion became enamored with the space age, which began with the 1957 launch of the Soviet satellite Sputnik and ended with NASA's last moon mission in 1972. Between 1964 and 1969, young Parisian couturiers André Courage, Paco Rabanne and Pierre Cardin created cutting-edge fashions that were dramatically different from the grand, elegant styles of leading haute couturiers. Theirs was the French response to a global youth movement that had already emerged in London. Parisian space-age miniskirts and pantsuits were sleek and geometric, and often ornamented with metal and plastic trimmings. Although space age couture signified the ascendance of youth culture, the garments were beautifully crafted in the timeless couture tradition. Exploring the depth of the Earth's oceans is considered by many to be as great a challenge as traveling to outer space. Following World War II, professional and amateur divers began to appropriate scuba and wetsuit technology. Underwater exploration expanded, and throughout the 1960s, skin-tight wetsuits worn by celebrity aquanauts proved irresistible to the fashion world. Vogue and Harper's Bazaar regularly featured models in newly colorful wetsuits or fashion accessories with face masks, goggles, and flippers. By the late 1980s, a few fashion designers had begun to experiment with neoprene, a synthetic created for deep sea exploration. While other designers, such as Junya Watanabe, created entire seasonal collections using waterproof synthetics that were evocative of actual deep sea garments. Fashionable interpretations of the wetsuit also became increasingly popular in the late 20th century. Noteworthy examples included Karl Lagerfeld for Chanel's scuba jacket covered with sequins. 
Whole collections featuring actual wetsuit material include Tom Brown's stellar spring-summer 2017 menswear runway show. In recent years, deep sea exploration has also led to the discovery of many new animal species. Designers such as Alexander McQueen have crafted brilliant prints using images of these otherworldly bioluminescent creatures that live in the ocean's deepest environments. Like the burgeoning scientific endeavors that inspired treks to the farthest reaches of the earth and beyond in the 19th century, Expedition Fashion from the Extreme is an early preliminary investigation of the rich and varied world of extreme exploration and the many ways it has made its mark on high fashion. It is by no means a comprehensive study of either field as topics are incalculably vast. We readily recognize that we are only at the onset of a long journey of exploration and discovery, a journey we hope will continue in the centuries to come.